Battle of the Trebia River, the first of the three major Italian engagements by Hannibal Barca. What's the situation? The Second Punic War has begun. Hannibal makes the outrageous move, the world famous move, of taking his army from Spain, marching over the Alps in the dead of winter, 50,000 men, losing 25,000 along the way, but he crosses the Alps in the winter. No one thought it could be done, so much so that the Romans, not anticipating this, they have two armies, one under each consul. One army under Scipio had been sent to Spain to attack the Carthaginian holdings in Spain, and the other army under Sempronius had been stationed down in Sicily with the intent of invading North Africa and going straight at Carthage. The Romans had no idea this was going to happen. Now all of a sudden Hannibal appears in northern Italy. What do the Romans do? The Romans, they then send for Scipio to now sail back to northern Italy. Scipio is there. The other army is now in Sicily. So remember in Rome there are two consuls. Two consuls elected each year and those consuls are the generals, they're the, the leaders of the army. One consul is in North Italy at this point, Scipio, he is facing Hannibal. The other consul, Sempronius, is actually in a place called Lilibaeum, which is in Sicily. The Romans were preparing to invade North Africa, to invade um, Carthage. The Romans generally go for the jugular, that's what they were going to do. They were not anticipating Hannibal actually invading Italy. So, Sempronius is now in Sicily with his army. He's given the order. You need to have your men, your legions, in northern Italy in 40 days. Show up or be tried and executed. This is the way the Romans roll. He took his army. They sailed from Sicily, got back to Italy. He marched that army, and in 40 days, that entire army, with all its equipment, its men, logistics, and everything else, were in northern Italy. So the stage is set. Both Roman armies are in northern Italy, one under Scipio, one under Sempronius. Scipio believes that the practical move is to not engage the Carthaginians at this time. It's winter, it's December, it's cold, it's a miserable time to fight. Scipio believes for a couple reasons. One, he's injured. He was injured in an earlier battle with the Carthaginians, a minor engagement. He needs time to heal. He believes that the troops that Sempronius is bringing in from Sicily, although they've had a hard march, they are not veteran troops. If they have a little bit of time, they can indeed train them. The third big reason Scipio believes they should wait is a significant part of Hannibal's army are Gauls, they're Gallic allies. They are fickle. Scipio believes if you give it a little bit of time, those Gauls are gonna get uncomfortable, they're gonna get bored, and they're gonna go home. So we should just hang out. But Sempronius decides for political reasons that he wants this battle to happen. To understand Roman battle tactics, you have to understand Roman politics. They are linked. Sempronius needed a battle. He was consul. Consuls are elected in the spring. This is winter. He needs to fight when he has command of the army. If he waits till spring, someone else gets command. He wants the glory of defeating Hannibal. He wants to be the one that takes down this rival. So this forces his decision. Also, critically, in the spring, although he will not be up for re-election as consul, his political faction will. He knows that a big victory in North Italy against Hannibal will assure the victory of his political faction. Therefore, he acts rashly due to political circumstances. So Hannibal has been able to successfully bring Sempronius to battle. Here he is situated in northern Italy. It's December and it's freezing. There's two sides of the river Trebia. Romans on the one side, Carthaginians on the other. The night before the battle, Hannibal tells his men, eat as much as you like. He hands out triple uh, rations. Everyone is well fed. He builds huge bonfires. He says, get warm. He has olive oil actually distributed to his men. His men rub down their bodies with the olive oil. This supposedly keeps them supple. It keeps them warm. No idea how that works, but that's what they did. So they, they hand out the oil. They're well fed. Uh, they're, they're warm. They are ready. Hannibal knows there's going to be this huge battle the next day in the cold, and he is prepared. Hannibal also has a trick up his sleeve. He always seems to have something planned. He asks his brother Mago, get 100 of the best cavalry commanders in the army. Get 100 of the best infantry commanders, bring them to me. These troops come to Hannibal. Uh, there is some speculation as to why this many. Uh, it's widely believed that frankly, during back in the day before you had PA systems, it was difficult to address a whole lot of people effectively. The idea was he got those people there. Uh, they came to him. 
He addressed them that night and said, I am going to ask each of you to go back to your camps. I want you to pick out the 10 best soldiers you have, the 10 best people that you can trust. You are going to lead a squad. What I'm going to need you to do overnight, I'm going to have you go and hang out in a wet, freezing cold marsh all night to spring a trap for tomorrow. All the rest of the men are here. They're all warm and well fed, but you have the honor of going out and freezing in a marsh. Why is this interesting? Why is this an interesting fact that the historians tell us? We believe that it's important because there's a big distinction between the Romans and the Carthaginians. A Roman who was very proud to have been in the army would have been given an order. You need to go stay in that swamp overnight because those are your orders. Now, Hannibal had a volunteer army of mercenaries. Perhaps he had to treat them differently. Perhaps he needed to convince them. So think about this rationale. You're picking out 200 of the best men in the entire army of some 35,000. That's a pretty big ego boost to think you're one of those men. And you're asking them to pick 10 each. So now you have 2,000 men who, although they have to spend all night in the freezing cold in an ambush position, they have been somehow selected as the very best of this army. That would be quite a, a bragging right for them. So perhaps this is a way that you had to lead a mercenary voluntary army as opposed to the professional army that the Romans had. Anyhow, uh, Hannibal has this uh, trick in mind. He has the 2,000 men spend all night out in the freezing cold in the marsh while their comrades are all warm, and he has set a trap. One of Hannibal's marks of genius is his ability to draw his enemies to him. He has again this day chosen the ground. If you can choose the terrain, which best suits the battle you want to fight, you have a distinct advantage. He's done it again this day. What we have is the river Trebia. He has chosen a position on one side of the river knowing the Romans will choose the other. The Romans are actually at a, they're at a decline. They're looking up. Hannibal has noticed on his side of the river, there are some rolling hills with the dry riverbed. Now from this side of the river where the Romans are, those gently rolling hills look like innocent gently rolling hills. But infantry commanders since the beginning of time have realized you can hide an awful lot of troops in gently rolling hills. That's what Hannibal intends to do. Uh, the Romans, by the way, are used to fighting with the Gauls. The Gauls have a nasty habit of charging out of woods uh, to attack them. The Romans are a little wary of heavily wooded areas, which they should have remembered at the Battle of Lake Trasimene, which this channel uh, covers in, in a different video. Check that one out. Okay, so we have the, the River Trebia. And the night before, what we have is Hannibal, his 2,000 men, which I described how they were picked a moment ago. He takes his 2,000 men, it's a freezing night, and he asks them to come down, to volunteer to hide in this area overnight. They are absolutely uh, unseeable from the Roman point of view. Hannibal has set an ambush. Regarding the number of troops that day, let's take a look at this. Very evenly matched, the Carthaginians and approximately 38,000 total. Of those 38,000 total, 10,000 cavalry. Heavy infantry, 20,000. Essentially the light infantry, 8,000. Of these, one third are the Gallic allies. That morning, cars with 38,000 total, cavalry 10,000, heavy infantry 20,000, light infantry 8,000, one third Gallic allies. Let's look at the Roman forces that morning. The Romans have approximately the same amount. The Romans have 40,000 men, Carthage 38,000. Of those, we have for the Romans, we have 4,000. 4,000 cavalry. Look at this disparity 4,000 cavalry, the Romans. 10,000 cavalry at the Carthaginians. For the infantry, for the Romans, we have 16,000 heavy infantry to the 20,000 Carthage. And then for the miscellaneous allied infantry, we have 20,000. Of all of these forces, one half are Italian allies. You can see the makeup of the different forces here. Uh, Carthage vastly superior in cavalry. Both are heavily reliant upon allied, uh, in this case, allied troops, in this case, Gauls. The situation, you have the Trebi River in the middle, Carthaginian camp on one side, Roman camp on the next. If you remember the evening before, Hannibal has sent his brother Mago 
down with a command of 2,000 troops that are concealed in some rolling hills in a dry river valley. They are very difficult to see. They are concealed. They've been laying in wait during an entire freezing night. First thing that morning, what happens just as dawn arrives, Hannibal sends his Carthaginian cavalry, specifically Numidians, over across that river. This frozen river is about four feet deep. I don't want you to think anybody's swimming, but four feet deep, but it's December and it's freezing. The Carthaginians come across, the Numidian cavalry, they come over to the Roman camp and they are making a ruckus. They are, they're riding around, they're causing all kind of trouble, so much so that the council here, Symponius, decides to rouse his men. He gets all of his men out of their beds. We're under attack, we have to go right now. He gets everybody up and moving. As everybody gets up and moving, this Numidian cavalry begin to withdraw. Fascinating fact. The Numidian cavalry were crack troops. They rode unusually without any bridles or stirrups or saddles. They simply had a thick leather strap that went around the horse's neck, very reminiscent of early Native Americans. They were vicious fighters. They were experts. They were gonna hopelessly outclass the Roman cavalry. Let's get this dumb motion battle started. The Numidian cavalry at daybreak are riding around the Roman camp. They're causing all kind of a commotion getting the Romans really riled up. Sopronius awakens his men at the crack of dawn. He asks them to get out of bed. They've not been fed. They put on their armor quickly. The Numidians fall back across the river. The Romans form up in a linear line. You're the Roman consul Sempronius. Your men are mustered and ready for battle. It's decision time. Option number one. Option number one, you're Sempronius. You have raised your men. They've come out of the camp. They are lined up. They have pursued the Numidians to the river. Once again, they're in formation. But at this point, you decide to not follow the Numidians across the river. You're going to wait and see what the Carthaginians do before you make your next move. Option number two. Option number two is Sempronius. You pursue the Numidian cavalry across that river and you attack the Carthaginian position immediately. Option number three. Option number three, you look at the situation, it does not seem like a good idea to pursue. You withdraw into the safety of your own camp and decide to fight another day. If you want to find out which option Sempronius chose, check out the next video on this channel, The Battle of Trebi River Part 2. Also, if you like what you're seeing, please take a moment, hit subscribe below. Thanks very much.